Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Adventures with Fusion Design Edition. Today we're going to cover patterning as our main uh, objective, both circular and linear or rectangular patterning. Stick around. I'll try to not make it very repetitive. Okay, before we get started, you need to get the documents. If you're a student of mine, you're going to go to Schoology. And if you are out in YouTube land, you can go to my website at mrsecrets.com and it has these documents you can download that show you all the measurements. So let's get right into it. Okay, so let's jump right into it. First thing, let's make sure we're in our Adventures with Fusion Design Edition folder so when we make our saves, it'll go into the right place. Control S on the keyboard is another way of doing it. This is week six and it's our last name and we are going to put down C patterning because we're gonna start with circular patterning. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna start a sketch and we are gonna pick a sketch and we are gonna pick the front plane and select that plane. We are gonna draw a um, eight inch diameter circle and we are gonna extrude it to 0.5 of an inch this far in the program. You should already know how to do that so I shouldn't have to go over those steps uh, individually. Now that we have our 8 inch diameter disc drawn, we need to draw the circles for these seven extrusions that run around the center. So if we look at this, the they are on a diameter, meaning the center point of each circle is 6.5 inches in diameter, which means it's 3.25 inches from the center on the radius. Now because we're doing circular pattern, we are only going to draw one and we are going to draw this one and they are all one inch in diameter. So let's get into it. So we're gonna start a sketch, choose the top surface of the part. We are gonna throw our circle up over here and we're just gonna go ahead and type one. Now, I am gonna use the horizontal vertical constraint from last uh, week five to align this uh, vertically, meaning that it can still slide back and forth uh, to closer or further away from the center. And then I'm going to use a dimension to apply that half of a 6.5, which is 3.25, to get it in the right place. Now, circular patterning can happen both in the feature as well as in the sketch. So on this first activity, we are going to do it within the sketch. So um, we have one. We are going to go to create, and notice there is circular patterning here. And then we're going to select the object. That is our object. We are going to then select the point we want there. And you'll notice the default setting is uh, for three. I, we are going to go to seven. Now there are some options. We can do full. We can do an angle. There's half of it. We can do it symmetrical where it goes from here, the same number left or right. In our case, we would like it to go full. And we go ahead and click OK. Now we need to extrude these to point two tall. So we're gonna go finish sketch and extrude. And we're gonna select, oops, I'm sorry, I created another sketch. So I need to delete that sketch by getting rid of it there. We're gonna select extrude. And we're gonna select each of our seven towers. And we are gonna type in 0.2 for the height. And we have our seven towers. Now that circular patterning is great. It can be done in a sketch. The disadvantage is it is substantially harder to change information. We can change the location pretty easily by going into the sketch and editing the first one. But if we wanted nine towers or we wanted three towers, that's very difficult in the method we've done. There is a better way. So let's start another sketch here. And we are going to do another circle. This will be this uh, hole right here and if we notice the hole is directly vertical from the center so we're going to start with that and we are going to draw a circle and once again this is also one inch and we're going to essentially do the same thing which is to set it vertically constrained and then put a dimension from the center of here to the center of here and this is on a four inch diameter which means a two inch radius we are going to go finish sketch now we've only drawn one and we are going to extrude it 
to a negative 0.25. So the, oops, I'm sorry. It, it already knew I wanted to cut it. So it went positive 0.25. Now we have one cut and we can go to patterning under the create some, uh, thing, which is also called a feature, and do circular patterning. Now we have to select, in our case, this is a feature. So we're going to select feature. Eventually I will show you these other ones in further lessons, but today we're going to do feature. We're going to select the object. The best place to pick it is down here on the design timeline and then select the axis which will be the center of our disk and then we want five of them and same thing here we have the option of angle and symmetrical just like within the sketch and we can click OK now the advantage to doing it in the feature is we have five let's say we do a design review and we actually want to do six we can go right click edit feature and just change this to six and we now have six. Oh wait, somebody's come back, the engineer. I'm sorry, not the engineer, that's what I'm teaching. The designer comes back and wants nine. Right click, edit feature, and we have nine. There is no good way to do that um, if you do it within the sketch. There are times to use in the sketch, but once again, just like Follett and Chip Chamfer, if you watch those earlier videos, I prefer to do as much as I can in the feature because the editability is a lot better. So let's go ahead and hit uh, edit feature and let's go back to the required five. But wait, there's more. We could have done, if you look at the drawing, there is a hole in a chamfer on the top. We could have done this all and then circular pattern it all together. So we're going to go back and correct that. So we're going to take the timeline indicator and we're going to slide it back before the uh, circular pattern and it should take away our circular pattern now we can create other features on this uh, hole and then we're going to go in and edit the circular pattern so that they all get patterned so here we go first thing we're going to do is we're going to start another sketch and we are going to do another circle this one's a 0.5 diameter circle and we're going to use concentric to establish these at the same center quick key and E to get right into extrusions and we are going to extrude a distance of all so it cuts through the whole part. We're going to throw a chamfer on this uh, outer cylinder and it is a 0.1 chamfer and now we have the completed hole that we were looking for as you see there but we need to pattern it six times. We can go back down here to the timeline by the way, this timeline modification works on a lot of features if you want to add things in beforehand. So this is not just a patterning. We're going to right click and go edit feature. And instead of selecting just one feature, we are also going to select this one. Because we are doing this as a correction, we have to hold down shift. I'm sorry, control on a PC. Um, the command key on a Mac. Um, if we had done it originally, we could have just selected them one at a time. But notice now all those features are being uh, uh, previewed and we can go ahead and click OK. And like that, we have made two circular patterns, one within the sketch, one within the feature. Now is a good time to hit the like button if you've made it this far. OK, let's hop right into this rectangular patterning project. So if we look here, we have this simple board. It is 12 inches by 12 inches square. It has 400 little holes on it. And I'm going to show you how to create this by only drawing one of them. So let's get into it. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is we are going to draw from the top. Make sure it's on the top. Rectangle. I'm going to use center justified. Once again, I'm going fairly quickly because at this point in this program, we're making a square 12 by 12. Hot key to E. Uh, one inch in thickness so we have our base plate now from the drawing we are going to draw another sketch on this surface and it's going to go in the bottom corner and it is an inch and a half square so 1.5 tab on the keyboard to jump to the other uh, box 1.5 D on the keyboard which is our hot key for dimensioning and we are going to dimension this 2.5 and also this side 2.5 quick lesson here if you select a dimension, like 0.5, and I press enter, these will now become linked. And I can double click on this and go 0.75, and that one will change as well. Or I can go back to 
little trick along the way. Okay, finished sketch. We're going to extrude this to 0.5. And we have our little tower there. And now we have to drill 16 holes into it. Now just so we're going to start a sketch here. Everything within this sketch has to do with quarter inch. It's a 0.25 diameter circle. And it is dimensioned from the edge at 0.25, which I could use same thing, that diameter to control it. And I can go from left to right and use that diameter to control it again. Thus, if I change the diameter, also will change its relationship to the corner. So we've now drawn the first of our 16 holes on this tower. And then we are going to pattern this tower to 25 total pattern total towers. So we can do this within the sketch, just like on circular patterning. You can do a rectangular patterning within the feature or within the sketch. So we're going to go to create rectangular patterning. We are going to select the object, our one circle. We're going to select the direction, which we can choose any line parallel to the direction we want to go. So if we wanted to go up and down, we would choose a vertical line. If we wanted to go left and right, we would go a horizontal line. If it's at an angle, we can choose a line that's in that angle. It can also be a construction line, so you may have to draw that line if you wanted that to happen. So we are going to choose this line. Now, if I only wanted to do linear patterning, I would only do one of these. Notice there is two, quantity, distance, direction, quantity, distance, direction. If you leave this bottom one with zero distance, you will not get a grid pattern. You'll just get a linear line. So first thing, we're going to switch this to spacing because the drawing shows that it's a 0.35 spacing between each hole. If it gave us the distance from the first hole to the last hole, we would do extend. So I've switched it to spacing. We want four of them, and we want them to be 0.35 apart. Now, if it's going the wrong direction, you can uh, go symmetrical, which would put them out. I'll show you what it looks like. It would go in each direction. Works better with odd numbers. 5, 55, get my point. 4 here. We are not doing symmetrical. We're doing one direction. If they go in the wrong direction, if you add a negative, that will switch which way it goes um, from the original. So we have that one. That would be linear. We would click OK, but we want to do a grid. So we're going to come down here. We're going to go 4, and we're going to go 0.35 again. And it makes 16 of these holes for us. And we can go ahead and click. Okay, we're going to go ahead and hit finish sketch and extrude and we are going to select all 16 holes. Oops, I don't want that. I just click on it again. It'll go away. They are being cut to a 0.25 depth. Oops, they're making little towers. To switch them from little towers, we can do one of two things normally. You can do a negative here or we can sometimes go cut and then it'll pick it up. But it's still airing out, so it's got to be a negative. Oops. There we go. So we have our six, first 16 holes done by only drawing one circle. Now, um, it does call for a fillet to be thrown up on these four corners. So we're going to throw up a quick 0.2 fillet on these four corners. Let's see if I can grab that one back there. We're going to flip it over and get the back one here and go 0.2. And click OK. Now we need to pattern this so that there are 25 of these things on this uh, plate. Now we are going to do a rectangular patterning, which is found on, under patterning down here, but I also have it up here. So I go ahead and pick patterning. Once again, we will, we're covering features. We'll cover these other ones in the future. The objects we want, notice we're going to do multiple objects. We're going to do the fillets. We're going to do the holes. And we're going to do the tower. And I didn't have to hold down shift or control on the keyboard because this was the first time coming through, unlike the circular pattern where we were making a correction. Direction, same thing here. Now, we are going to use extend because the drawing does say that it's 0.95 from the beginning of the first one to the beginning of the last one. So we are going to use uh, 9.5. I'm sorry, I said that wrong, 0.95. And it is going to be five of them. But you see it's going in the wrong direction. So if we just change this to negative, not positive, negative, negative, it now goes in the right direction. We are going to do the same thing here, 5. And we are going to do uh, 
and these ones did go in the right direction. So then we go ahead and click OK. And we have our rectangular patterning. Now, time to save. So Control S on the keyboard. Shocking, but it's going to be W6, your last name, and R patterning. Right, C patterning, R patterning, rectangular patterning, circular patterning, makes total logical sense. And we go ahead and hit save. So this part is done. Hopefully you learned something. Please hit like and subscribe. Give me a comment if you want me to do anything special on um, Fusion, any special topics, I'll try to add that in. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.